Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak and in this video I want to talk about sumps and I also want to talk about canister filters. The SCA Aquarium, the reason I bought this is because it came with a sump and an overflow already built in it. For the price, it was just a little bit more than if I would have bought a stand and an aquarium with nothing and uh, that would have cost me about 630 bucks for an ADA aquarium where this SCA aquarium came with everything to get the tank going and start it so once you pull it out of the box you can set it up and get it running they give you everything uh, even filtering material to help start cleaning the tank and, and motor a 650 gallon hour uh, motor with it, pump with it, and the reason I got this is because the price was just a tad more than my local pet store was selling an aquarium for with just tank and stand and nothing else. And the reason I chose the sump is because first I wanted an overflow. Uh, you need to have a skimmer of some sort. Plant the tanks seem to build up a biofilm, and this biofilm is contains uh, a lot of proteins but the proteins and stuff are caused because of plant proteins not animal proteins because usually planet tanks have more plants and animals and if you're going to have a buildup of proteins you want it to be plant versus animal okay because in the wild 90 percent of the pond's mass is plants only 10 percent is fish but in our aquariums and ponds 90% is animal life and only 10% is plant life. Well, when we make planted aquariums, it usually turns around to be, once again, 90% is the plant life. So here's all the parts that come with the tank. You also get filtered material, R really. You get filtered material, everything. So this is the reason I chose it, because it did have a wear, and, it had, and it's a very large wear. I think it's 5 inches by nine inches or ten inches and it really is capable of taking quite a lot of water into it but as you look closely at this video you can actually see it skimming things off the top of this particular aquarium and because I'm pumping 900 gallons an hour moving about uh, 20 times an hour this tank uh, it does a good job as far as keeping the tank clean the downside is it will gas off CO2 that's one of the downsides of a wear. This is the sump that comes with it. Now, this is the first chamber. I have a quick disconnect so I can pull that pipe out to clean the sock out. It takes about one minute to unscrew the pipe, change the sock, put a new sock in, and let it go. There is four compartments with this sump. The first compartment is your main cleaning compartment that's where you're you're not filtering you're doing your mechanical filtering in that first compartment the second compartment though is going to be biological but that is emergency overflow so really no water goes down there in case there's an emergency and the first pipe clogs up that center one will be my anoxic filter and I will put a basket in there and the fourth one is of course there is for my CO2 to be chopped up and made into fine bubbles and mixed with the water, my efflux pump, and my heater. Now, nothing goes into tank. That's another thing about sumps. Everything stays in the sump, so cosmetically, your tanks stay nice and clean and clear. Now, I'm pumping 900 gallons an hour through this, so I don't need extra motors. I don't need extra pumps sitting in the aquarium. I don't need anything to make the water turn over. Uh, faster to make uh, more of a uh, you know you see in a lot of these videos people have extra pumps for their CO2s and stuff you don't need that when you have a sump all that is done in the sump the aquarium is nice and clean and clear so this is great too if you think about it for goldfish because you can move a lot of water very quickly with goldfish using a sump versus a canister there's two canisters that are very powerful uh, one's a Flovo, about nine, 950 gallons an hour. The other one is an Eheim, 
550 gallons an hour. These are big filters, um, but they're a hassle to pick up and clean. When I pick this canister up, this is a 2215, an old Eheim. As I pick it up, it empties the water out of it automatically as I'm picking it up. So when I have to take it in service and change the carbon in it, I'm carrying an empty, I'm carrying an empty canister. It's not full of water. So it, it, it's very easy to move and take and service it. And you only have to service it about once every two to three months because the filter socks you'll be changing every week. But, of course, the canister itself you won't have to change for every two to three months and put new carbon in. And it's, it's very simple. And then you put it on back. But you can use any idea you want. This is just my idea. And, of course, like I said, that back part of the sump, you're never going to touch. That's why I put bio balls in there. It's just extra added filter, uh, biological filter. That's all it is, just biological filter. And that water moves slowly through there. And the only time it's going to go through there, like I said, is through the emergency. And this is, of course, a test using the plenum. Uh, nitrates are still zero but uh, one reason the nitrates are so much lower is because you think about it this whole tank is being turned over 20 times an hour at about 900 gallons an hour that's a 2,000 gallon an hour pump and I'm able to turn this tank over 20 times an hour without blowing the fish around and these filter socks they only last about a week, and they get very, very dirty in just one week. Where if I had a canister filter, let's say it even pumped 300 gallons an hour, it would take weeks for it to collect the amount of detritus and smut and algae that this collects in just seven days. I mean, it would take weeks because you wouldn't be turning over your tank as much. And... This is something that, look at all these parts you get as part of the aquarium for just a little bit more with the sump. Where, And this tank also came with a black background, so I don't have to buy a black back background. Uh, the stand was already put together. Uh, it was well packed. It's about 280 pounds. They ship it right to your door, this particular tank. Uh, plus that center part of the sump is going to be my anoxy filter and I'm going to build a biosinosis clarification basket for that center part. I'm going to have a video how to do that. It's very simple. That basket that's going to go in there will never clog up. It does not clog. So you'll be able to have that for the next 20-30 years and it will do denitrification and it will take out phosphates and improve your water quality. And the good thing about this is if you decide you want to have disc or more delicate fish, like a, a, you know chocolate garamis or something more delicate, you can do that because you can keep changing a sump and build it around the fish you're having. Where a canister filter, you can change the material in it, but let's say you fire up your canister filter, pumping 300 gallons an hour. Well, it's not really going to pump 300 gallons an hour. Let's say it's only going to pump 270 or 250 gallons an hour. And as it ages and becomes clogged more and more, it's going to start slowing down. And I don't like changing my canister filters except maybe once every four to six months. So you can imagine how much slower that's running. When you use a sump, the motor never slows down. It pumps 900 gallons an hour. Okay, six months from now, it's going to pump 900 gallons an hour. It won't slow down because everything's being gravity fed. So because of that, you will have to make sure you devise a way that you can change your filtering material very, very easily with a sump where you're not taking all kinds of things to the sink. And here I have a brush, and all I do is open up those gate valves there and just send a brush down to the motor. I don't even take the motor out of the sump. Just send a brush down there. goes right down to the motor, cleans the impeller, cleans the tubing out. Oh, you can't get any simpler than that. I don't even have to take the pump out. This is the only part of this sump that's removed once a week. And I disconnect it by this quick disconnect. That's it. It takes a whole minute. You know, 
it can't get e any easier than that. I think the only easier thing you can have is a hang on the tank back filter where you would just pull the cartridge out and put a new cartridge in. I think that would be easier. But because this is pumping just so much water without, you know, stirring up the tank or anything like that, it's not only great for tropical fish, but it's great for goldfish. Look how dirty this is. That's one week. And imagine if I was only pumping 300 gallons an hour. Like the pump they give you only pumps 650, but it's, by the time you're done, it's about 300 gallons an hour. Your filter would not be like this in one week. It would take maybe three weeks to get this way. Because sumps give you such a versatility, uh, it's excellent for keeping water crystal clear. And this is the outlet that goes into there because with a sump you have to adjust the overflow that goes into your main pipe that takes all the water from the sump into your, not from your sump, but from your wear to your sump. And I just use a hole in a pipe like you saw to do it. I don't use any gate valves because gate valves, they're very expensive. And I've sucked in fish, as you can see in this video. There's a fish in there, and it didn't kill it. I've sucked shrimp in. I've sucked, I sucked in snails. Uh, if you use a gate valve, okay, uh, that will crush the fish because you're making a moon shape opening with a gate valve versus a round hole. Or if you have a shrimp go in there, it's going to crush them. Snail, snail could maybe not be crushed, but it will block it up. And I don't want anything blocking up, you know, that pipe. I want it to run clear and free. But if it does block up, which once I had it block up with a snail, a big, huge one-inch snail, uh, everything went down the emergency drain. And I came home, it was making noise. Okay, I reached my hand in there. Oh, there was a snail, got stuck. Pulled it out, boom, everything went back to normal again. Uh, another thing of it is, is, is you have a wider surface area of which you are extracting the particulate matter out of the aquarium when you use a sump because most of them will have an overflow drain. And that's bigger than a little bitty pipe with a little basket strainer on it. Where this... Uh, I think it's eight inches long by five inches wide. So you pretty much uh, are skimming quite a lot. And the wear is separate from the tank. So if the tank completely empties, the wear will empty. It can empty in the sump and it still will not overflow. That's the right way to make an aquarium and sump. The sump needs to handle 100% of what is in the wear. That is the correct way of making it. So you're never going to have a mistake. You're never going to have an overflow problem or anything else. So canister filters, they're great. I love them. Nothing wrong with them. But sumps give you bigger versatility. So I hope that explains everything to you. Until next time, this is Dr. Kevin Novak. Thank you for watching.